Well, welcome to our second Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, intern yeah. podcast. I have Germaine. Me, same one. And then Olivier. Me. Hey, yeah, you guys kind of got to get pretty close to these microphones in order to be able to speak. So definitely lean in towards them. Um, and you can also move the arm too. Just Germaine's pretty tall, so. <laughs> you didn't have to say that, but okay. What <laughs> like the slide? <laughs> um, so, we just watched Atlanta. Was this your first time watching Atlanta? Yeah, that was my first time. Um, we watched season three, episode nine, or episode, yeah, nine, I believe. Seven or nine, one or the other. Second, the penultimate episode of season three. <laughs> it's called uh, Rich Wigga, Poor Wigga. Rich Wigga, Poor Wigga, that's the episode we watched. Yeah. Um... um just starting off, that episode is was kind of just about. What do you think that episode was about? Let's <laughs> let's start with y'all. What do you so, think that episode was first about? First of all, that when 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 you started, right, it's kind of confusing. Like I didn't really. Try, I was trying to see the the point of it. So to the end of the movie, then I got to see the point of like basically it's trying to show how it's like being a black person in America. Yeah, I was, I was sum up like that, yeah. how it's like being like, not just in America, but in American schools specifically, and um, the difference that comes with that, like what is really being black, kind of that. Yeah, yeah, and was there, yeah, it was pretty much what it was about, this mixed kid who um, was dealing with his blackness, not only his racial blackness, but his ethnic blackness. Um, I would agree with what y'all said. Um, was there any characters or specific moments you resonated with from that episode? Yes, actually. Uh, near the end, when the, when the uh, light skin kid meets with, uh, with the other kid, who they were, they were both, did, okay, so they were both determined not to be black and they both decided to burn the house, the, the school down. And so they meet, and the other kid explained why why they decided to say he wasn't black, which was because he know where he came from, and he can trace where he came from, and all this stuff. And that's pretty much the deal with me. So I, I was able to relate to Yeah, because where was that kid from? Where was it? He was from kid? Nigeria. And his parents were from Nigeria. Yeah, he was yeah. from born in Nigeria, right? And yeah. Like he grew up in Lithonia. <laughs> so he, he explained that he pretty much has no idea what, what Nigeria is. He's mm -hmm. pretty much living here for his whole life, but they still say he wasn't black. Yeah, Lithonia is also in a, is another suburb in Atlanta. Right. Um, <laughs> I should have explained that. I, I assumed it. I assumed it was somewhere. <laughs> I was like, because it's, like, it's not the country. With, uh, but yeah, it's yeah. A, I was like, you aren't Lithonia, though. It's a line from a. Donald Glover rap song. Um, one of us. Easy. Hey, hey. Welcome. <laughs> How are you me. doing? Um, you can come join as well. I'm just listening to the scene. conversation. Um, so, as, um, as, I guess, yeah, because he was from Lithonia, and then, like, he grew up here, and he didn't really have the concept of what it is to and why do you think why do you think they viewed blackness in the sense of that they didn't know where um, they were coming from? Feel free to jump in. I, think, I know it's <laughs> going to be really confusing yeah, for you, but feel so free so to I jump in whenever. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to try to do our best to explain um, yeah. what happened throughout the episode we just watched. Yeah. So I, well, well, the other thing was like if your if your skin was just black or if you're black like culturally, mm -hmm. which are like two different things that kind of work together in a way. <laughs> and uh, the, so the, at the high school, they were offering scholarships to the people who were black culturally. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't black culturally because his yeah. parents came from Nigeria and, and all that stuff. So. And they knew their culture. Yeah, and, and like they knew they had, were, So you would say people who are black ethnically don't really know their culture? And, or, would, or like don't know that like where I, they came from and I, what culture they have to draw from to inspire their... I think they just current tradition come from a different culture, honestly. Well, it is a different culture, yeah. but do you like with her case with our friend here from Nigeria mm -hmm. and who grew up in Lithonia? Mm -hmm. 
like the reason why Aaron, the our protagonist, the character we followed, uh-huh. um, doesn't understand, or he says, "What well, I get it." It's because you're from this place. You have like a whole cultural to pu- culture to pull from, yes, yes, yes. right? And like it's almost like you have the option to be culturally black instead of just racially black, right? You know, and yeah. like I guess people who are culturally black, they don't have that option, that other culture to pull from mm-hmm. for traditions. Yes, yes, yes. And so that's, and I think that's what you're saying too. Yeah, like yeah. that's what yeah, I, it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, like better words, better, better said. Um, I just wanted to kind of one get Bonifacio in here and relate it to the gotcha. the text, aka gotcha. the TV show yeah, <laughs> specifically. Gotcha. But I think that's exactly I yeah. Olivia, was there any part or character or anything that you related with? But I wouldn't say that I'm related to, but like I feel like the Aaron part is kind of sad. Like uh, how at the end you have to change to be like uh, accepted that uh, he's actually <laughs> black. Yeah, but like, do you think he changed or he just was? Because the way that that scene is called, um, Aaron feeling his roots. That's what this scene is called. So do you I, think? Uh, I don't think that feel, do you I think he changed himself, or did you think he just went to who he really I was? Yeah, no, I don't think he changed. I think he just embraced who he was. Yeah, that's the feeling I he got. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. He was no longer straightening his hair. Mm, right. He was so no he longer was... dressing ridiculously. <laughs> like, but yeah, he eventually he was getting his waves. Like he was yes. feeling his roots, and that's what that's how I viewed it. But I think that's really yeah, yeah. A, I think that's an interesting perspective. Is that from where we started the episode, we see him change that way. Yeah. However, if we go back farther and we start it with his life, I feel like it would be him going back to it would be to, to his roots. Really, 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 I mean, yeah, that's like what he was he was actually trying to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and so it's I don't know. It was really. I don't know. It was really really. There's there's a lot there. That that was there was a lot of comment, especially when at, at the end when Aaron makes that comment, um, that dark skin joke comment, um, just even touches on the colorism that is within the black community and people who are racially and ethnically black, is how much are you black depending on how people view you, right? The person was giving out scholarships to people who weren't even ethnically, like, or who weren't even racially black. Right. You just had to be black. You just had to be black. <laughs> like, you had to be black culturally. So, like, na- the Native students were getting it. The Latino students were getting it. Um, and that kind of stuff. Um, so we open up. We open up this whole thing with a very long online scene where we pan through the oh. where we pan through this kid's room. He's playing a video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And cool. they're saying Does that sound similar to online lobbies that you have been in? I wouldn't say similar. That was kind of wild. I mean like, it's kind of just like online like when you play online, online people just kind people of say whatever. Sing it, I mean you don't know who you talking yeah. to. So. People say whatever online. Hmm. And so yeah, I mean people say whatever, but like I mean Aaron Aaron drops the hard R <laughs> on yeah, the people yeah. he's playing with and really makes fun of, fun of them in a really racist way. Yeah, that was really racist. Right? And like and when we first see Aaron since the whole sh- episodes in black and white, we don't we don't really we can we, we can't, can't tell, tell if he's black or not. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we would tell was white. Yeah, we all that was black. Well, we all knew he was white because he wasn't, but like, he he wasn't black. He didn't embrace his blackness yet. We did all that. He didn't embrace his blackness, so we didn't embrace his blackness. Yeah, so we all thought we all thought he was a white kid and pretty much being racist. And yeah, he was being racist and like, but now here's my question. Looking at looking at it back now, after seeing the uh, at the end of the of the episode, was that racist? Like, yeah, because at the time he wasn't black, oh, yeah. right? And he also dropped the hard R too. That's true. <laughs> like he, he also dropped the hard R. Like it's not <laughs> like he just he was just casually talking. He like he did say a really racist yeah, joke. Yeah. Like he was yeah he was calling he was calling black people monkeys. Yeah. But um, I just forgot what I was gonna say. What the heck? I just forgot what I was gonna say. Like looking back on 
on it, you were like, is it racist? Yeah, no, no, that's not the first thing that says. No, just don't. I'll remember him. All right. <laughs> we'll get back <laughs> to you. So, yeah, he's in that scene, right? And then we open up, or, and then we go to the shot of him driving to school with his dad, mm-hmm. right? And his, and that's when we first realized that this kid is black. <laughs> like, we ver- that he's racially black, right? And um, this whole episode really does a good job at, like, like Germain was saying at the beginning of like separating the difference between racially and ethnically black and how they can both be tied but also separate, um, in a conversation, and that the conversation is very heavily nuanced, right? And so they're listening on the radio, and they hear um, the police say that a um, person has been shot and killed by the police. And then, <laughs> what does the dad say? The dad's like, damn shame, right? Damn shame. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah? That's what it's in yeah. the head, too. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and so oh he says God. that, and then... And then Aaron's like, oh, he kind of dismisses it because what does he say? What does Aaron say? Well, uh, it doesn't say something about the police yellow freeze. Yeah, they'll like, always yell. That, that, that's the first thing they said. Like, yeah, hadn't the guy froze, he wouldn't have been shot. I think he yeah. said something like that. Then it does look like, I hope one day that your kid will go yeah. over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why is that a hope? Like, why does, why does he hope that for Aaron? Because Aaron is his son and he obviously loves his son. Like, I think he would, he would um, I think he would hope that so his son can learn. Yeah, I don't I don't think Aaron actually knows that like I don't he would, like how the police treat them different like how, like well, when you first like like it's a, if it's a black kid getting pulled over and a white person getting pulled over. Yeah, is there a difference? Of course. Do you think that. there's a difference? Because like I mean I think there's a difference for sure and I agree with you but I'm just kind of asking to clarify like is there a difference do the cops tell you to freeze before they shoot is that do you think because Aaron thinks they'll tell you to freeze yeah. before they shoot yeah, yeah and his dad's Aaron. like no um because he's like you don't have me fooled like I know who you are yeah. right um Bonifaz when so if you were if you were to be pulled over or which he has been multiple times <laughs> if you were to be pulled over right do you do you think that experience is different than your do you think that experience is different than your classmates i don't know honestly i mean i've had an experience with that but like i don't know it's just uh everything that happened it was I don't know. It was just right, I guess. I've never faced that kind of uh, abuse or unfairly trail. Well, yeah, because partly it's because you're so young. I still don't know what Bonnie is saying. Though. Huh? I feel like also it like, depends on the situation. I don't think they're just going to... And where we are, too. Yeah, exactly. Where yeah. we are is also a pretty exactly. key, key thing. Like, yeah. we're here in Vermont. However... You can't cry your way out of a ticket. No. No. Right? Yeah. Do you think some of your classmates could? Cry out of a ticket? <laughs> no, I don't nah. Know. What do you mean? I mean, I've never seen that. Yeah, I know you've never seen it, but do you think they could? No. Nah. That they start crying that all of a sudden the cop will be like, oh, just make sure you get home safe. I'm just letting you off. It, it, no. It depends what kind of the situation is. Like, if there was speeding. Same situation as you. I'm saying it's the same situation as you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, like, you, you were both speeding. Mm-hmm. Right? Could you cry your way out of that ticket? It depends, like, what kind of police pulled you over. No, but no, he's like, asking you. Well, I'm asking, asking you. Like, like, any cop, yeah, right now. Any cop. They're about to give you a ticket. They're about to give you a ticket. You start crying. You cry out that they're going to take the ticket away. I don't think that must be possible. No, like, I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, mean, I don't think that's possible for yeah, me yeah. either, right? But I don't think I mean, it's like, possible for anyone. Oh, yeah. I've heard some stories, homie. <laughs> but, yeah, I've, heard, they, I've they, heard a lot of stories. They, and they, that is a go-to move for they, a lot they, of people. They, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. to instantly start crying mm. and hope that the cop pities them enough to be let off with a warning. That's um, true. That's true. But I can, for I, all four of us here, that is not a reality. For Aaron, yeah. that could possibly yeah, be a reality. Yeah. Because he straightens his hair, and he has that privilege, right? Yeah. But, but for us four, 
we're getting that ticket. <laughs> like, like, you cry or not, you're getting that ticket. You cry or not, you're getting that ticket. Yeah, well, not, one cop is just gonna let you go because you're just too simple to start yeah, crying. I mean, it's it's just it, gonna, and that's part of the problem, know, right? Like, what the heck? <laughs> They'll let you go with the ticket. <laughs> that's what you heard. Yeah, like, I've, I, I've literally been in the passenger seat and I've watched it happen. Like, I've literally watched this happen with my own eyes and I was just mind blown. Because I was like, in my life, I'm getting that ticket. Like, even if I started crying, they'll just be like, why are you crying? <laughs> yeah, and so, and you see, like, and I'm like, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, because I don't think everyone should get ticketed for speeding. I'm saying more so, it's just the fact that, like, if we can let off a warning for someone because they're crying, we can let off a warning for a lot of other people. Nice. And also, the cops aren't always going to treat you in the sense of, like, they won't always tell you to freeze first because of how they perceive the situation. Right. Right. Because if you're frantically crying, you must have done something. Right? <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what they're thinking. They're not thinking like, oh, you're just really scared to talk to the police. They're thinking you've done something. And that's the difference in perspective there, right? Even if you and I both get pulled over, we're gonna have a completely different experience. I mean, most probably all of us will be like, we don't speak English. <laughs> that's the way. That's the way to, do it. <laughs> that's the way to really do it's it. The, it's, it's literally a default setting. <laughs> it is a default setting. Me, me no English. <laughs> um. So we see that first scene, right, where they're like, Aaron's dad is like, hey, like, I just wish you were pulled over so that you can officially experience that, right? Yeah. Like, and for those people who cry out of tickets, you kind of just wish that they were pulled over in your situation where they yeah. didn't really see that. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the thing that I think his dad is trying to get him to empathize mm. and resonate with is the fact of like, put yourself into my shoes and get pulled over. Perspective people. It's a completely yeah. different situation because his dad's dark skin, yeah. even though he's his son, his dad's dark skin. So his dad is in a completely different situation. And even Robert Shea Lee even says that too. Like, he can come over and get these dollars in that. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> that movie means it. Um, That's a really good episode. And uh, so, after that, we get to the school. We see his group of friends. He's all, we find out they're all going to college. They're all, like, they all have it paid for. They all have it figured out, right? Except Aaron yeah. doesn't have it paid for doesn't have it figured out. His dad said, we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was plain and simple in that he should have gotten the scholarships to afford it. Um, so after that, we go into the gym. There's a big announcement where we meet Robert Shea Lee. Oh, what, also, what's the school's name called? In the, oh, I forgot. Like, it, 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 it no, ended the, up the gym ended up after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's it called? It's, you can't remember, it's called Stonewall Jackson. Oh, yeah, Stonewall, yeah. And, um, do you know who Stonewall Jackson is, both of us? No. Stonewall Jackson is a um, Confederate general and slave owner who um, ended up getting killed by the Union because they're like, you can't get through Stonewall Jackson, and they just kind of trampled through him. But like, um... <laughs> like, history, man. Um, <laughs> Uh, but like he was a pretty major, he was a major deal on that playing field, and a lot of schools in the South are named after former slave owners and generals of the Confederacy. And imagine going to a school where the person named after the person who owned your family as slaves. That's yeah, 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 that's nice, I, I didn't even realize that was a thing because like all the schools here are just pretty much named after the cities. Or I don't no, that's it. not all true. Is but there a school that's named after a person? Yeah. Um, no, Ethan no, Allen no, Park. Ethan no, we're talking about that's schools. Not, that's uh, not a school. But that's not that's a school, a but that's still the same no. kind of idea. Why would you go to that? Why, how does it feel to be in a park? Where, who was Ethan where, you're, was where, you're, where the person had owned slaves. Wait, who was Ethan Allen? Ethan was he a Allen? Or something? I don't really know exactly what he did, but I do know for a fact he owned child slaves. And he was a eugenicist. But I, um, I think I heard so of him being like, maybe he fought like in some sort of a war or something. That's that was Admiral Dewey, fought in the Spanish War. And you'll see his stuff all over the place. He also Please. makes me very mad. And I feel really bad for all our Filipino, um, our Filipino community members 
who have to go to places that are named after Admiral Dewey um, because he really caused a lot of atrocities in the Philippines. He, he did a lot of atrocities in the Philippines, um, yet he's praised here. Um, and, and it's kind of the same with Ethan Allen. Like a certain group of people praise him, but he owned children slaves. Because in Vermont at the time, even though slavery was abolished, and in Vermont, it's still written in our constitution that you can own slavery only applied to people who are over the age of 18. So if you were a kid and you were enslaved, you didn't count as a slave. So there would be plenty of Vermonters that would own slaves and consider themselves abolitionists, but they would just have children slaves instead. Like Pocahontas is another example of that. Um, and I don't know, I think that's a really important thing to recognize is like, so how would you feel to go to a school that's named after something that, or named after someone who owned your friend's family or your family? Like, would you feel good? Would you feel bad? Very, very bad. Like, that, that's that's like, yeah, well, how like, does that even happen in the first place? What the There's plenty yeah, of so things so like that. Like Ethan Allen Park was the perfect example or like but, Ira Allen. <laughs> Like, uh, Ethan yeah. Allen is pretty much the same with Berlin. <laughs> there's, well, yeah, four, I, there's a lot of Ethan Allen. There's Ethan Allen, Allen Shopping Center, Battery Park. I know. There's so four. besides the bad things he did, so well, well, think he definitely did something good. Then. Yeah, I mean, he was. A, I'm pretty sure he was a soldier well, or something. Well, well, like, no, I bet he just. I just he bet just bought a lot of land so that he could put his name on stuff. Can yeah, I Google, yeah, Google it. <laughs> Ethan Allen. I. But we'll move on after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, um, keep going. Yeah, but still, yeah, that makes me... <laughs> so, the person, Robert Shea Lee, who's also named after a um, Confederate general. Robert Lee is also a Confederate general. However, Robert E. Lee is the Confederate general. However, um, he even renamed himself to Robert Shea Lee, right? And so when he renames the school, he renames it after himself. So it's also that idea of black people retaking their names their names of former slave owners and their former slave masters. It's retaking their names. Like Malcolm X used to do that too. Like his name wasn't X, his name was Malcolm Little, <laughs> right? Malcolm. But he didn't like the idea that his name was tied to slavery and tied to the idea of enslavement. So he changed it to Malcolm X. Um, and so it's that same idea of reclaiming your history and making it something that you and your community is proud of. So changing his name, changing the high school's name to Robert S. Lee, mm. even though it's still the name after a general, it's the name, of, it's his name. Like, it's Robert Shea Lee, you know? Like, um, and I think that's what's really so important. Um, so, do you find out something about Ethan Allen? Yeah. What did you find out? Like a farmer or something. Businessman. Yeah, it's it's not, like, I thought he was a businessman because I was like, you don't own slaves if you were in the mil like going to the military. But it was a bunch of things. Okay, it was a big businessman. <laughs> I'm just gonna look up controversy. Controversy. <laughs> That's how you find anything. <laughs> no, but it's actually like it's a lot of places. Ethan Allen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Artists. Oh yeah. Like and it's and it's real and I mean it makes me mad. Like I like the Ethan the spirit of Ethan Allen. The spirit of what? Enslaving children. <laughs> like like, uh, like yeah exactly. So like and he was just a businessman and like he must have just really put, brought a lot of money into this region. But what he also did and then so when when before your slave child would turn eighteen, you would send them back to the south to go live the rest of their life in enslavement. You see what I'm saying? Like, you see how problematic that is? And like, even like, and the fact that you don't even know, too, like how many of those kids do you think knew that they were going to a school of a person who owned slaves? Uh, Probably not all of them. Not all of them, yeah. But now they do. And like, and, and I mean, that wouldn't sit right with me. And it doesn't sit right with me. Like, <laughs> and so I don't. Um, especially in a city like Atlanta that is so predominantly black, that is so black. Um, right, to have a high school like that yeah. is just really, um, 
messed up stuff. Really messed up. So do. what does Robert Esley do? What is the announcement that he makes? This is the most one of the most. This is our inciting incident. This well, is the important part. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Robert. It's not. It's like you fun doing it. Mr. Robert. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, no. You gotta sit that way and sit. Okay. You say I'll be a yes man. I'll be like yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. So he goes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We have a scholarship. <laughs> we have a scholarship. The whole class was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get a scholarship. They will pay a tuition for every student. Every black student. Uh, no, no, they said it for oh, everybody yeah, first. Everybody, yeah. like, and they were really happy, like, yeah, well, you're going to be black. <laughs> they all sit down and clapping. And then he's like, yeah, we're doing everything, but he's black. And then all the black students just start rejoicing. But, like, to be, to be uh, what was it, culturally black, you can't just say, I'm black. Yeah, I'm well, originally that's originally that's not how it was phrased, right? Yeah, no, that's not how it was phrased. Oh. It was revealed that way. And that and like and that also reveals something to us about how we perceive race as well. How yeah. we thought it was just the people who were just black, right. but like that kind of puts that points that and like shines the mirror at us. We're really like, oh yeah, black students, cool. <laughs> and what did you even say at that part? You're like, but what if the roles were reversed? And I was like, well, hold on. And also. What else did I say? I also said, like, all, all of Aaron's friends had school figured out. They had scholarships to go to school. They had it, like, they could have afforded it. Yeah. Aaron, and it seems from, I guess, what, the, uh, what we're supposed to gather about the other students is that they were struggling with the financial aspect of going to school, not the fact that they couldn't get into school. Right. It was more so the financial aspect of it. Because mm-hmm. they definitely could get into school. But yeah, then, and that was my point too. I well, I I said that like a black man, I don't know, I'm supposed to be giving scholarships to every black kid in school. But I don't know, like, what if the the roles were um, that? And I I was I think what I said was uh, um something about earning to go into school. I was like, well, uh, what was like all maybe all the kids that got the tuition, they earned that tuition to go to school, and all the kids that didn't, they, that sh- they just didn't. Yeah. And I, it, I also was going to say, like, but now you start to realize how, like, that's not necessarily the case. <laughs> yeah, I'm, all, I'm always saying, like, <laughs> so, like it's not, uh, they didn't make this clear, but when they show that some of the kids that got the tuitions, did any black kid get a tuition? Yeah. Some of the black kids got the tuition. Oh, oh, like that before, got, before, before they the was given. No, but none like, of them did. And then all of a sudden they're posting on Instagram that they're going to college, right? So it wasn't the fact that they couldn't go to college or that they couldn't, have, like, get into college. Yeah. But, like, what do you need in order to get a scholarship? You need time to apply to it. Yeah. You need a whole bunch of, like, recommendations and that kind of stuff. Like, if you're working on a job to support your family, to support yourself even, mm. how do you have time to do that? You don't, really. Um, and so that's also part of it, right? Like... And that's what even Aaron said. It would be like, well, if you're black and poor, like... It's pretty bad. Um, so let's talk about um, Aaron's friends' reactions to all the black students getting their tuition paid for, their scholarships. Um, what did they say exactly? Because they're like, isn't this what they were doing to black people in the 50s? Yeah, they said something which, like that. Yeah. Which I want to kind of focus on for a second because one they never did that and they never they never well they always did that and they never stopped doing that um black people are most likely to get um looked over for scholarships black people are far less likely to go to college you see what i'm saying so if they were doing it to black people in the 50s, when did they stop? They didn't. They didn't. Because they didn't. They didn't. No, <laughs> like, like, otherwise you would be able to tell me when it stopped. They didn't stop, but they weren't making it like, obvious without the actually. Oh it. yeah, no, it just became, yeah, it yeah. became institutionalized. Now we're starting to look at like, now we're going to schools and the people we're recommending scholarships to aren't the black kids. You know, like now it's starting to, now it's becoming an institutionalized problem rather than the fact that, um, rather than the fact that they were actively doing it to black kids in the 50s. Because that was more so just to keep them out of these white spaces. Now it's that they're in, able to be into these white spaces. It's more so about keeping the riffraff 
out of these spaces, um, which is often black people, um, in multiple different forms. Um, or what they mean by that is they just mean black people. Um, but because all their friends, all their friends already have their scholarships. Right, they right. have their stuff. So what would a scholarship have done to them? Nothing. It wouldn't have added anything to the thing. They were all going to college. They all had it figured out. So then if, if they were doing these things to black people in the 50s and they feel like that, how come they were still able to go to college regardless of the outcome of that situation? Like, they all, like we saw it with his ex-girlfriend. She, she still went to college, college even though she no. didn't have the scholarship. <laughs> because uh, She's uh, the, just finan uh, financially, well, why families are kind of like an advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the opportunity to, to have more. And I would argue it's not racist too because he didn't use black as the race, he used black as the cultural thing. That's, that's and, yeah, 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 yeah. and that's true, which yeah. at the, when we first heard it, that's not what we heard. No, we didn't not. understand that until Aaron goes in. What happened is, okay, so there's two parts. He goes into the foyer, which is that opening room with the vending machine. He goes into that place and he's uh, he meets someone uh, who's not black. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, why are you here? And that, what does that kid explain to Aaron? Oh, sure. Yeah. That, that for, like, the first kid to come out of it, right? The kid that comes out of the room, right? No, first he goes into the room. Uh, go, where that kid who's like, he's like, can oh, you wait, check yeah, me real quick? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which is, he can't get waves because he doesn't have the hair type for waves. That's the part that he says, he wasn't fair. What was the that was the part where he's like, he's, he, it's right before he's going into the room, where he's about yeah, to get roasted. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't really get that. I didn't really get that. Okay, scene. so what, what the kid says is he's like, well, the way Robert Shea Lee is looking at this is he's talking about blackness in the sense of what it culturally means to be black in America. Right. And he's taking a very nuanced approach to it. I don't really know how to define nuance, but everyone here knows what that kind of means, so, right? Yeah. Like, you know what it, you know the feeling of that word. I don't, like, because I know the feeling of the word, but I couldn't define it. Just, it's a complicated situation, and every situation is different, yeah. right? So he's looking at it in a very nuanced situation, but like a nuanced way, right? And so that's why we're starting to see Latino kids also waving their checks, right? Because their experience, of, or their family's experience or whatever of coming to America may have resulted in them having what it means to, like having a similar experience of what it means to be black in America. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's also the part where um, Aaron says like, well, my dad's black, so I'll get the tuition, but my dad's black and I'm black. Yeah. And then he goes in to find out that that's not, that was not the case. Yeah. Go, go bring you. <laughs> what does he find out in that room? What does he find out in that room? So like, what? Can someone walk me through that? Like, uh, what? What happens? Do they just? Well, he goes in the room and is questioning all this, all this questions. random stuff that doesn't really matter if he gets it right or no, not. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, um, I think he he's only like arguing was that my dad's black, so therefore I'm black. And, yeah. And do all like, no. What did they? What did they call him? They called him, him white. Yeah, they, they called him a specific white. thing. You are oh, well. white. <laughs> and why do they think they think that? Well, I mean, he looks. He looks white, well, yeah. He looks but white, like, he acted white. Well, he, he straightens his hair. He's on the, he always had he straightens like, his hair. And that's also really a key deal. Like that's a big deal. But no, <laughs> but yeah, like the like that, like and I don't really I don't really comment on it very often, but like. But, well, if I saw that kid, I would have slapped him upside the head. I was like, what are you doing straightening your hair? Like, yeah. What I didn't even get I, I, in that moment particularly was that they say he's white, but if he was white, then he would have kind of gotten the same opportunities that the, the other white kids got earlier. Well, yeah. So he just pointed out he was white, but he was, he was phys sort of physically well, white, see, but I think, he was like, I think there's two things at play here. I think one, that's the difference between, that's the nuance of the situation, the difference between racially and ethnically, right? Because ethnically, he is white. Yeah, right. Right, but racially, he's black. And the reason why, like he didn't get the scholarships and that kind of stuff, because he still has his black last name. Right. When they first see his application, yeah, yeah. And his parents they assume 
a black person. Yeah. But like, like they assume a black person, and that that's like if I go in and my name's Jerome or Jamal, right? <laughs> Jamal <laughs> Washington. Jamal, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, and people assume instantly I'm black, even with my last name as it is. Yeah. People assume that I'm black before they even see me, right? And that's a systemic part of it, and that's where be, racially being black plays a role in your systemic appearance. And that's why he's such in the middle. That's why he's so stuck and he's so confused. Yeah. It's because he's like, where do I relate? Because he feels like he, well, now that he wants his scholarship, he is too black for white people. He didn't feel like that before. But now that he wants to be black, he feels like he's too black for white people. The black people are like, where? You haven't shown up. You haven't squatted up this whole time. Well, what I'm saying like, like uh, he didn't have like the culture stuff so that made him black, but he still had the pretty much the same struggle that every oh, yeah. every black student had in the school, like financially going to he, college and stuff like he that. He had the same struggle, but he wasn't coming to the same conclusions. The same conclusions that his dad came to, that those other black students came to, that the Latinos came to. The fact that, and he still believed that the police will yell threes at you first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. That's true. That's true. And that's yeah. all, that's honestly the instant. My friend of course when they ask him like what hap- what happens when like you're the police and stuff and, like what happens when you hear somebody dead or something you know? Oh yeah and the, and he said something he explained like Oh yeah what happened with that story on the radio that they heard. Yeah yeah and he explained the whole story that oh a student got shot in school and stuff and it was like what did you say about that? And he was, he said something like sorry or something about that kid. Yeah. And they're like, No, you're supposed to say it's a damn shame. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't seem to his dad. Yeah, and which is something that is that sad. Yeah. 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 And at the end, when when the when the black kid goes in the ambulance getting shot, um, I think the rubber guy in town goes like, "It's a damn shame," and gives him the check. Yeah, we scholarship. <laughs> and so yeah, instantly. Um, and so yeah, they call him white. Um, I also think one other point I wanted to make to that too was the fact that like. We've been talking how there's racially and ethnically black, and how being ethnically black is not being able to tie yourself to that culture, right? That like you can draw from, and that kind of stuff, or that culture from Africa, or the specific tribes from Africa, or whatever. Um, but then, what is whiteness, right? And into context, like if blackness is the opposite of whiteness, whiteness must be that stripping of the culture. Right, and so when they call him white, they're almost like you are stripping. You, have, you, you are my oppressor. You have put me here. You have made me this race of black. Yeah, I, I, feel, I get what you said, and I think that's why that guy was actually very mad when he was saying, "Yeah, like when he was calling him white." Yeah, because yeah, he's like, "You are my oppressor. You have put me here, and now you want to come and ask for my money yeah. so you can go and do the same thing, like." stripped him of his culture so much like he stripped his own hair the oils on his hair to make it straight makes me so angry <laughs> like, yeah, <that's laughs> <you. laughs> like straightening hair is a very complicated thing and it clearly makes me very very angry um so yeah they call, we're, we're not even halfway through this yet <laughs> like, yeah, like, i wonder what boy things were like because he didn't yeah, watch the show think so far like, like or, the what, what is are, like, yeah are you getting the point of view <laughs> yeah, like, 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 are you getting like what we're kind of talking about? Like, uh, are you following along? Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts so far? I don't know. Um, like, start from the beginning. I mean, I just had focus, but like, from where I started, uh, my point of view is just like a person. Uh, it's sort of a person who's going through change, and he's trying to figure out which part of uh, 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 ratio. Uh, it, uh, ethical, cultural. ethical, cultural place mm-hmm. he belongs, mm-hmm. and he's kind of struggling. He's looking for that by looking for that change. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, like, there's this concept. Okay, so I think it's a situation where uh, um, we, his racial slaps him in the face. I don't think he's looking for anything. I, I, mean, I, I think he's kind of slapping. Do you think that he's looking for change, or was he's he like like, trying to prove to people like, well, like, who is that? I don't think he's looking for change, I but I think he's experiencing. Experience. I think 
I think he's getting a mirror held up to the thoughts that he was predisposed to. And bully, like the I thoughts really, that were anti himself and the thoughts that were anti black. But wasn't he like confused between those uh, parts from like where he belongs? Yeah, his? and I definitely like as a mixed person. I definitely resonate that with that. <laughs> like, yeah, I definitely I, understand what you're saying. I, but I don't think this was necessarily about the fact of whether or not he was white or black. I think it's more so about... Well, we, what did we talk about? I was like, there's two parts. Your racial identity is your external perception. So how yeah. people perceive you. Your ethnic and cultural identity is how you, your friends, your family, they perceive you. Right? And so he perceived himself as white. Right? Like he like he was straightening his hair, he was wearing sperries, he was doing all the things. Um and I think um but racially he was mixed. Oh yeah. So I think I think he's just being confronted with the fact that because he is in two of these worlds that the way he perceives himself is going to dictate on whether or not he is white or black in this situation. Ethnically. The way he sees himself. And I think pretty much part of like the way the show starts in the beginning is just like it's kind of like what people normally think in, in society right now and what, what he goes through and learns from the beginning of the, of the episode to the end is pretty much what anyone watching the show would learn, like the truth behind it, these Behind these how things. complicated this yeah, is. Yeah, or people who already live in it see yeah. how complicated this like, is. Like, I, I imagine some people would like, 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 I wasn't even aware of that, of those two concepts before I watched that episode. And, uh, and it does a really good job of explaining it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Like, because I, I think briefly, like last week, I mentioned to you those two concepts. Yeah, yeah. And you so. just looked at me oh, so confused. Like, that? And that's why when I came in today, I wanted to switch. And I was hoping y'all would choose that episode because I wanted to switch because I knew that, like, when I mentioned that to y'all, y'all looked at me because I was like, well, and even Emirates, too. I need to get her on this. <laughs> like, yeah. Because y'all are looking at me like I was weird and like I had two heads. And I, like, I understand that it sounded really complicated and you didn't actually see it. Yeah. And it is complicated. It is complicated. It's nuanced. Yeah. yeah. Like, and if you didn't actually see it in action, that nuance wouldn't really yeah. be clear. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and so that's why I'm happy y'all watched it. And I'm happy you said that, too. Thank you for the movie. That movie was, <laughs> <laughs> was broken. <laughs> um, and, oh, so we just got the scholarships, yada, yada. Aaron finds out he doesn't get his. Yeah. Um, he gets called white. Um, he goes home, realizes his girlfriend, that doesn't really matter, yeah, realizes his girlfriend is, is going to go see another black dude at ASC. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden he's like, she's replacing me. Yeah. But with how a, did, with a black dude. Because at that point he still, because at that point he wanted to be black, but he still was white. Yeah. And he still saw himself as white. So it honestly makes a commentary on replacement theory and how replacement theory is just racism. Um, and how that, like, no one's replacing you. You just, you just couldn't keep up. You couldn't do it. No one's replacing you. Um, and so, but he feels like he's being replaced and then he arms himself with a flamethrower to go burn down Robert S. Lee High School. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this gets really complicated here for at least a second. Um, he builds it himself too. And what is what is that what is that other kid, Felix, I think his name was or something. Was that a kid from Nigeria? He was from Nigeria. from Nigeria. Yeah. What did what did he say when he first got there? He's like, What did you do? You just walk down the street. Keep your black card tucked. I had to assemble my thing behind a and dumpster I and I had to take the bus it. here. Yeah. Right? And Aaron even said something about that to his dad earlier, because his dad's like, he's like, walk four miles, and he's like, oh yeah, I know how you don't like that bus system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah, so pretty much, he could just walk around the neighborhood because it was yeah. sort of like, why no one would do anything like that. And no one said anything about a kid carrying a flamethrower down the yeah, street. Yeah, but if it was black, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, if it's black, dude, yeah, 60 exactly. shots in his back, yo. They wouldn't even ask for anything. They wouldn't have asked. They wouldn't even say freeze. They wouldn't have come to Well, they didn't say freeze. They didn't say freeze. Exactly, yo. Exactly. And so, well, 
we talked about this at the very beginning yeah. because that's what you yeah. said you really re- resonated with. Um, but like Felix is like, oh yeah, because he said I wasn't really black because my parents are from Nigeria and I spent my whole time in Lithonia and um, and Aaron's like, I get it because you have that whole cultural to pull from so you're not really black and then he makes a dark skin joke. He said, ooh, I'm black, I'm darker than you. Um, no, he makes the joke of, he makes fun of him for having darker skin. And that's also a very, very, I wish they talked about that a little bit more, even though the whole episode was kind of about this, but I wish they talked about it a little bit more. That's something we call colorism. Um, yeah, there's the, I'm going to be the academic term for Let's it. Let's do it. Um, you see my skin. Yeah. I'm not as dark as y'all. Flat out and simple, right? Sure, yeah. That means I'm given a whole bunch of a different set of privileges than you all are when people see me. Yeah. Because when pe- some people see me, they don't immediately even associate black. And that's a big deal. Like, that completely changes my interactions with people. That completely changes how people perceive me. If I raise my voice, that changes how people perceive me. Um, at the same time, I often find myself having to validate myself amongst my friends who have darker skin and darker complexions, right? Like I have to validate the fact that I'm black. Like I have to reiterate the fact that I'm black, right? Even though y'all don't ever have to do that. <laughs> People are like, see you and they're like, oh, look at this African king right yeah. here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? But like. And, like, I mean, I do it all the time. I mean, I'm Spanish as well. But people can see that off my facial hair alone. <laughs> like, uh, like, I got those colonizers in my bloodline. Um, and so, like, and that's the thing. And so, like, when, I mean, we even see that when the cops shoot, who the cops shoot, too. Even though he is black, he is light-skinned, right? They shoot the darker person first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let, 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 me, let me set. You set up the scene for oh, Bonnie. Yeah, let's set up the scene for Bonnie. So they get into a beef about this. Go ahead, Jerry. So, the, so the two black kids that were trying to burn in a school, they kind of stop fighting each other, and uh, the darker kid burns the other kid's shoes. So he starts. He throws. He throws his weapon away, and he starts like sort of like running. Mm-hmm. And so the guy steals his weapon. The darker kid steals his weapon. So he's chasing him. And then here comes the cops. And no, they, you should ask him why. why, the, why we don't even see nah, here no, comes the cops. Boys, we boys. don't even see the cops come. We just hear a gunshot. So this, this black kid, the darker kid, has a weapon and he's chasing this. He's not nice, chasing. He's standing still. Yes, oh yeah, he's actually standing still. Like, but he's already like, uh, uh, after after this last kid. And well the, well, the cops just shoot him out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, we don't see the cops. No, we don't even hear the cops. After they shoot him, they say freeze. And then the the, the last skin kid is like like that. That's pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> but wh- when I first saw it, I was like, oh yeah, totally normal. But that guy has a weapon, shoot him because he's dangerous. But but then what did you point out? You pointed out that was it was the cop in the bike or on the side or on the front? I mean, well, it doesn't really matter. We don't even we didn't even really see the cop. We didn't even see them. Oh, did he come from the bike? He, he didn't, didn't even he come out. He doesn't come out. He just freeze. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like oh, yeah. They cut the scene. They shot first. Yeah. We well, they were show him. They show him shooting, and then they show they they show the cop. He was in front of him, but it doesn't matter where he is. He still shot him. Before he said, yeah. he said before he said anything. But yeah, he the kid did not see the cop before the, the cop came back. That that's, yeah. that's messed up. That is messed up. Wait, but the true thing is because of like uh, he, he was actually like ready. To yeah, that, that yeah. was what I said. Yeah, I said, yeah. and I kid, don't disagree with that. That kid had a weapon, and if you're a cop, and you see one kid running without a weapon and one kid be standing with a weapon, I don't know. I don't they're know how. Both burning. They're both. They're both the two suspects there that have yes. burned the high school, though. Mm-hmm. One kid's running away from flames in the high school, and the other kid is holding a weapon, yeah. right? I don't so know. To me, know. personally, if I walked in that situation, they both need to be arrested. <laughs> like, I would right. well, like, well, well, one kid do first. One kid I would say, yo, freeze. And then they'll arrest them yeah. both. But, like, yeah. they both need to be arrested. But why the situation the other kid in front is it? Like, he's, yeah, he's just running. Like, if, like, he's I, running, and then all of a sudden he on. sees the other person, and the person's like, ha, ha, ha. And then, then all of a sudden you hear a shot. 
And, yeah. and then that shot hits the kid. Then you hear freeze, freeze. like three seconds later. Yeah. And then the kid like lifts his hands up and turns around yeah. because like, he still is, has his hair straight. Do you think that's racist? Do you think that's racist? That fact that like the cop shot. I don't know. The cop shot should have said the freeze first. Like, oh, like, uh, no, the, no, the cop was white. The cop was white. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know because. Oh, okay, actually, that's around. interesting. So is, would it be different if the cop was white or black? It would be different. How? How? Like because like if the cop that shot the black kid was black. Man. Yeah, that wouldn't be like racist. It would be something else. But I mean, that's still but still he still shot him. Yeah, that would still be racist. It was like self defense. He had a weapon. So wait, so wait, 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 wait there was no self defense. defense. Yeah. <laughs> no, because in self defense, you have to give someone the warning that they yeah, can leave. Yeah, you still have to give someone a warning. Yeah. Even self-defense. in self defense, you have to give someone a warning. But like, what if like the other kid was about to shoot the other kid? And he had well, I'm, no, I think it's a flamethrower. It's, it's a flamethrower. But it, <laughs> I was out so it, like, what was your answer to that, Travis? Like, you, you, in your view. And so in my view right now, this whole situation is really racist. Mainly because if you're going to shoot someone, you have to, one, make sure that they can see that their their, their, their life yeah, is in yeah, danger. Yeah, yeah. Number one, that's literally, literally, that's a, like a hum, universal human yeah, code of conduct. You like, you don't shoot someone while they're peeing. You don't shoot someone while they're sleeping. Yeah, you don't know the like, situation. You, you don't know the situation. Yeah, yeah and exactly, so, exactly. and like even if I saw someone up there with a gun, you still yell freeze first, right? You make your presence known as someone with a gun and a weapon, as someone, an armed individual, and an armored individual. Um, because he's wearing a bulletproof vest too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's far distance away. He's had plenty of training. You see yeah. that. And also the fact that literally the school's on fire behind them. <laughs> like, the school but, is on yeah, fire. But like, like, and so he should have really yelled at them both free, get them both on the ground. Yeah. That, like, like, and then you the rest of the top of the the Imagine this, you're a cop, you come to a scene. Because Aaron still got arrested. Yeah, you come to a scene, the building's on fire, and both one, of them. one kid is chasing. But when you're in that vision, you would see one kid chasing the other kid. You, exactly. you, you wouldn't think but about if you, that. But they shot first and asked questions later. Yes. You know? Like, See, that's, that's just not problem, something you like, do. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not something you do. Like, it's kind of like... Like, because... Like, yeah, like... Yo, 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 so, so remember uh, the Melly brothers and how they got... Um, beat up here in Burlington by two ble- po- Burlington police officers after they got in an argument with each other and they were screaming at each other. Well, they got beaten very badly by these two officers and they just showed up to the scene and just sl- started slamming their heads against the concrete and the and the walls there on in downtown. And instead of just telling them both to stop or doing any of that, they literally just went in and they just started pushing. Right, um, and I think that's the and I think that's what it's more so p- trying to point out is that if there were two white people who were having a family dispute outside of a bar, they wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't have done anything. They'll be like, calm down, calm down, not immediately pushing them, right? And yes, Aaron still got arrested and he still went to jail, meaning that he actually did something wrong that day. Meaning that that other kid also did something wrong, too. I'm not taking that away from that other kid. But the fact that one ends up getting shot and not the other, even though they both did the same thing. That's crazy. Right? And that's what I was saying, too, about, like, how Jalen Walker gets shot 60 times by cops unarmed. Mm -hmm. But the dude who shot and killed eight people on July 4th at a parade gets to leave that night gets into a car chase, same as Jalen Walker, gets into a car chase and gets arrested with his life while armed. That's the difference. And I think, and that's what I think they were trying to point out in Atlanta, more so the fact that they were both, because they were both at fault. Yes. And the situation, of course, is complicated, but your first reaction shouldn't be shooting and then yelling freeze at the other individual. It should be yelling freeze at both of them and then if someone makes a move, then, then you, you make your move. That, that you know? That's basic training. Yeah. That is basic de-escalation training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's what they thought. That's what they thought. Like, this and that's what Aaron thought should have happened, too. Yeah, freeze first. Freeze first. But that's not what happens to black people. As we know. As we know. Even when we're frozen. Even when we're frozen. Yeah. Someone's suffocating us. Yeah. Someone's knee on the neck, right? So, like... 
that's why I was like, hey, it's like straight up, like this is a much larger thing than rather the fact that the cop shot one of them, it's why did the cop shoot one of them? And it wasn't, and not the other one. Because they were both at fault. They are both running from a building or a school on fire. They're both suspects to me instantly. They're both suspicious. Because oftentimes when schools are on fire, someone has a firearm. Yeah. And so th there's a lot bigger situation going on there. Um, so you have to make sure they're both frozen. Check them both out. Put them both in the back of the squad car. Even though I don't, I mean, I don't really think it, I mean, how do I get into my police abolition? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, and then at the end of the episode, kid shot, he's getting loaded up into a van, Damn. right, into an ambulance, because he somehow survived, even though I thought he was shot in the head. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, yeah, I know. But, like, he somehow survived. Mm -hmm. um, and what did Robert Shea Lee, Shea Lee came to the school, what did he say immediately? He said, damn shame. Damn shame. <laughs> like, supposed to say. We still like this is the, the, the most blackest thing. Uh, oh, yeah, getting, getting shot, shot by the police is the blackest thing, which I also really liked your evaluation. So one of you said something being like, how does that make you black? And I'm like, that is a really good point. Like, yeah, how yeah, does yeah. that make you yeah, black? I, yeah, because <laughs> all this time he wasn't accepted as black, but all of a sudden after he gets shot, he's all of a sudden black. How does him getting shot make maybe, him black? Maybe it's because how the police saw him as any right. other black man, rather than they saw him as um, yeah, well, they, like when the police first got after, there, after like someone from died, Nigeria. After he nearly died, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, and then he got a scholarship at the end. I wouldn't take that. I do. Yeah, I wouldn't take it. Oh, and his medical bills were paid for. Oh, oh yeah, uh, you should take him. Yeah, what you want about? Bro, I nearly got. I nearly died, and now you want to give you want. Now you want to accept me. Was laughing too. Yeah. Now you want to accept me. Well, who else was going to accept him? <laughs> well, if nobody says to me, maybe they should have just. Who died. else is gonna? He's gonna spend a year in jail, okay. just like Aaron, right? Who's gonna and like, who's gonna spend probably even longer? We didn't even see him at the end of it. He probably even spent longer time in jail, yeah. right? I mean, Aaron was working at Paul or something. And that scholarship could really be the seed money to like after you get out of jail. No, but right? I gotta get what he's but saying. Still, but yeah, no, he, I hear what you're saying. Shot. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. He survived, thankfully. Yeah, he did. And he got his street cred. He got his black card. Now, if anyone questions him, he'll be like, well, I got shot by the police. And people will be like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> people will know, because, like, I don't know, when 60% of police shootings happen but, to black men. But him getting shot doesn't take away the fact that he can still trace his family back to Nigeria. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So but how is that any different? It does mean he's suffering through the same black experience and the same black well, oppression. Would Robert Lee know that? Or Robert S. Lee. S. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Robert. Oh yes, and that's why that's why he said originally you're not black, but he didn't realize that this kid was getting into stuff like this. He didn't realize that this kid was like actually, actually is black, actually doing black things. Even though Bernier okay. School is not a black thing, I do want to make that very clear. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Well, I want to make that very clear. I, <laughs> we don't burn schools. We don't burn schools down. That's yeah. a, that's a white thing. Um, <laughs> well, no, it's true. That, that, that. Um, well, and that's really important. And then Aaron doesn't get the scholarship because he wasn't shot by the police. Yeah. He still went to prison. But then at the end, Ooh. what happened with that Aaron? That was a whole different person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was a different person. Yeah. He did but change. At the end, he pretty much embraced his blackness. Yeah. He got the waves. He got the waves. And he started carrying the, 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 the brush. <laughs> that we was talking about. Everyone's done chain. that a few times. You know it. <laughs> he got a chain, you know, casual thing. His accent even yeah, changed. Yeah, he changed. You know? like that we was talking, yeah. It sounded a lot more like his daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and right. you, you could tell like in the different in the beginning he wasn't saying things like you know what's up, blah, blah, blah. but at the end it was like you know this and that. And yeah, like he started using the accent that his mama gave him. Yeah, and that's what embrace the accent. Embrace the accent. Letting it out. Yeah. So, any final thoughts from you two about like what you learned or? Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Go on, Mr. No, wait, wait. I'm taking you if you go in Or even you too, Boniface. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, he, he, uh, it was like, it would be hard for him to accept who he was. 
until he got in trouble and then went to jail for a couple years, right? <laughs> for one year, and then he comes by like a different present. I don't think he learned his lesson, and he accepted his path that was supposed to follow. Yeah, I think I'm also getting connected with his community too. Yeah. I would argue. Oh, I, I, I was I'd with love, people who actually accepted him instead of uh, his girlfriend, who immediately saw to another black dude going to the same school as she is. Yeah. I'm gonna slide into those DMs. Like that's what she did, <laughs> right? Oh, well, I told when he said the thing that we should all, for my conclusion be that if we should always try to know who we are. Know who you are. Mm. And embrace it. <laughs> yeah, embrace exactly. Mm -hmm. But like. Sometimes you're kind of like it's, in the middle, and yeah, it's you, sometimes always, you take a bad situation to make something good. So yeah. I mean, it's always like hard to embrace of who you are because you know the moment you uh, embrace who you are, it's always like you have to actually make tough decisions. And you have to go through a lot, and yeah. you have to put in more hard work, and people and that's it. Don't like that. And that's an interesting statement because do you think like because all you're doing is embracing who you are, right? Do you think that embracement of who you are could be considered to some by like a protest to them who they are? I mean, protest. if you look in a different uh, different way, it could be considered as uh, a protest. Like, it's uh, finding of who you are, and it always takes like some hard work to do that. Mm -hmm. You never like, find it out overnight because like uh, most changes. It never happen overnight. It takes time. But you know, I mean, I think it depends on like it, it yeah, depends on the situation of who you are. Like if you're if you're a mixed kid and you're in that situation, then it'll it'll, it'll take some work and like listen to like maybe if the kid was listening to his parents in the beginning, he wouldn't have gotten in that situation in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But do you think he's like by who, being who he is? Do you think he's protesting like his other friends and being like, hey, this is who I am. I'm not that white person. I am. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because my friend Jess, she actually has a really interesting s statement about this that she views black joy as a protest. It could be, I guess. And but. and us feeling who we are and feeling ourselves is like is the protest because people people don't, don't like to see are. people don't like who we are and people don't like to see us happy they don't like, like us like they, they, don't, they don't want to see us they don't want to see us winning <laughs> they don't want to see us blessing but guess what drink this <laughs> who believe in us drink this <laughs> that's the one no, but no I, I I think also like depends on the situation like like they say like me like like I don't have to embrace who I am because I'm, I'm pretty much just who I am you know but like if like if you're in that situation then you have to like let it out. Yeah, 